Hey, what's up everybody? Joshua Casper here with Plugin Boutique, and today we're gonna to talk about the power of module chains inside of Isotope's RX-7. And along the way, we're gonna learn a bit about the breath control, DS, deplosive, mouth declick, and EQ modules. And I'm also gonna to toss in how to load and use third-party VSTs right inside of the RX-7 standalone application. All that and much more coming up, so let's get started. The reason why I love the module chain so much is that I record eight to 10 videos every week in the same studio with the same mic position, the same room. You know, I never move things around in the studio. Everything should be pretty much exactly the same each and every week. So being able to have a module chain that just runs through a bunch of modules for me with the settings that I know are gonna work for my personal dialogue it's just, it's such a time saver. So I'm gonna show you how to set it up. So I'm gonna, let me just come in and show you real quick. See, I've got Joshua Studio One here. These are the five modules that I use on each and every vocal I do for each and every video I do that I can be confident because of the calibration that I went through in the beginning are gonna make my vocals sound better or my dialogue sound better each and every time. And then I can pull it into Premiere Pro and just do the final touches in there. So I'm gonna show you how to do this, and along the way, we're gonna talk about breath control, de-essing, deplosive, mouth click, and EQ. So I'm gonna come back into the default here. I'm actually gonna close out of there because we can't preview, actually, let me open it back up. You can't preview modules when you're adding them to the module chain. So if I come in here to the denoise module, I can't preview, okay? So it's very, difficult to know whether or not my settings are good if I can't preview them. So what I do is set up the modules before I add them to the module chain. So if I come in here to breath control, for example, and let's just pull it on the default, I need to find some breaths and I need to make sure that one, the breath control finds breaths as well. I need to find them and then make sure the breath control finds them too. And then I need to make sure that I'm actually getting some gain reduction for the level of breaths that I usually take. And I need to make sure the sensitivity is okay and it's only picking up breaths and not picking up anything else that shouldn't be picked up. I'm gonna pretty much leave it at 60 because it's pretty good for most cases, but I definitely wanna point out that the sensitivity can be tricky if you need to do a really precise project. So let's just find a couple of breaths in here peppers, things like these, that, this, those, three. Okay, so I got two breaths right here. Let's go ahead and output breaths only and preview to make sure the breath control sees them. Like these, th And it does, it picks up pretty much the entire breath. You wanna make sure that it's picking up the entire breath and not just the bulk of the breath because then you're gonna get sort of audio dipping and that's gonna be adjusted by the sensitivity control. So if I boost it up to 100, like these, that. You'll notice that this t right here was picked up. That means it's too sensitive. It's picking up things that aren't breaths as breaths and we don't want that. If I pull it all the way down, like these, that. Now it's not picking up anything. So that's what sensitivity is doing. Uh, so again, I'm gonna leave it right around 60. It doesn't need to be exact. Just preview, make sure you're getting all of your breath sounds. You can see it visually inside of the spectrogram where the breath is. Let's just make sure we're getting that. Like these. Th okay, we are getting a little bit right here, but uh, I, I don't think we need to worry about that because that's just noise anyway. It's not part of a word or something that we need to you know watch out for. So the next thing we need to do is pull down the target level until we get a good amount of gain reduction happening, which actually means pushing it back. If I do it right now, check the gain reduction meter right here. Like these, that, this, those. So nothing's happening. So this module is doing nothing on a breath this quiet. And it's actually a pretty quiet breath, so we don't need to worry about it that much. But just in case, for future things, let's just go to negative 60. Now let's preview. Like these, that, this, those, three. That's a much better sounding breaths. You can still hear them so it doesn't feel unnatural, but they're pushed way back. So I'd unclick out here to deselect everything, come into my module. On the default setting, I would come into breath control. They're in alphabetical order there. 
and we should be good to go. These settings are gonna be kept. If I close this and then open the settings here, you'll see that my settings are exactly the same, and that's what we wanna do. Also, make sure to leave up with breath only unchecked. Otherwise, you know, you're going to have a problem. You're going to have to do some undoing later on in the future. So, boom, breath control is done. Let's just move on to de-essing. Now, I should have mentioned this in the very beginning, but this audio is kind of good calibration audio you should do inside of your studio, especially if you're using the same one over and over again. What I like to do is do these kind of sibilant... Um, Tongue twisters like Sally Sells, She Sells, and then I like to do Peter Piper Picked a Pack because that's got all the plosives in it, and then I like to do CHs and THs, and just do kind of the problem words, just do a bunch of those in different sections, and that way when you're setting up your calibration for your different modules, the, the process will be quite simple. So for this particular piece of audio, my DSing is gonna be right here. Let's listen. Sally Sells Seashells Down by the Seashore. So all kinds of S's there that we need to attenuate. So first of all, output S's only. Let's make sure that they're getting picked up. All right, very good. And let's go ahead and make sure we're getting some gain reduction. So we're getting plenty of gain reduction. And that's pretty much it. I like to keep it on slow, uncheck output S's only, again, jump into my module chain, add module, come in, DS, open it up, make sure everything is the same, and we are good to go. Next up, we're gonna add deplosive. Again, come up, deplosive. And let's open the deplosive module from over here. And right here is where my deplosives are. Peter Piper picked a pack of pickled. P and I find actually that the default works here, but feel free to come in and check these. So again, let's preview with this default setting. Peter Piper picked a pack of pickled peppers. So that's looking pretty good. Now we can adjust the sensitivity. Peter Piper picked a pack of pick picking up a lot. Here it's going to be picking up less. Peter Piper picked a pack of pick. It's not even picking that up. So, I mean, right around five is good. Strength, let's see what happens. Peter Piper picked a pack. It feels hollow, right? The, the P's have completely gone out of, you know, it's just not, it's uncharacteristical. Is that even a word? Peter Piper picked a pack. And there it's not even doing anything. So again, right around the default is pretty good. Maybe a little bit less. Peter Piper picked a pack of pickled pepper. And if we want to bring down, you know, the frequency limit, let's bring it down to 50 and see what that sounds like. Peter Piper picked, so it's not even removing anything. If we bring it all the way up to its max. Peter Piper picked a pack of pickled pepper. Yeah, that's not working either. So let's leave it right around 200. Peter Piper picked a pack of pickled peppers. All right, and again, close out. We already got it in the module. The next one I would add to this chain is the D-click, mouth D-click. Boom. This just picks up those, the sounds of the mouth clicking, which are very, very, very distracting, especially if you're listening to like a podcast or something. You gotta get rid of these things. It just sounds gross, especially once you start to hear them and then you focus on them. You just wanna get rid of them. So I'm gonna come over to mouth to click over here. And again, we can output clicks only. Do really do it from anywhere and just go ahead and listen. And again, the sensitivity works the same way. You're gonna be picking up every single click, but you're probably gonna be picking up some other things that aren't clicks inside of the process. So you wanna be careful with that. And down here, you're only gonna be looking for something that be exactly considered a click. But again, you're probably gonna be bypassing some that you should be picking up. So, you know, four is working for me. If we go ahead and just, you know, render that real quick or preview it, rather, without mouth clicks on, only on. Peter Piper picked a pack of pickled peppers. So that's without, 
the clicking, and here it is with the clicking. Peter Piper picked a pack of pickled peppers. So you can actually hear it, right? Especially around here, it gets rid of it. Here's another good example right over here. That's a mouth click for sure. Let's see what that sounds like with the mouth declick module. Three. All right. With it. Three. And without it. So that's what it's doing. It's getting rid of them. So let's go ahead and you know, make sure we still have that. It's the default. It's good. Oh, you can also widen the click. So if you look right here, you know, let's just go ahead and do it. I can undo in a second so we can get a good idea. Let's zoom in right there. This is the click we want to get rid of. Let's render it. It's gotten rid of the click. You can see that it's gone, but it's still got something there, right? So if we undo and we widen the click here, Let's widen it to this and render again. It's getting rid of more of it. But again, you want to be careful with this because clicks are clicks and they're short and snappy. So be careful with the quick with the click widening here. If you want to do it just a little bit, it's probably okay. But if you run into a click in the middle of your word, then you're going to be removing some of the actual content of the word and not just the click. So I suggest, unless you're running into issues where you can still hear clicking happening, to leave it at zero. But, you know, again, each project is probably different. And the final module I like to add is the EQ. Let me zoom out here again. Up here again, EQ. And if we open up the EQ, I just come into the dialog center here, and I actually come down here to the high pass filter, and I bring it over to around 100 hertz. And if I go ahead and render like just this part right here, what I'm looking for is down here. You see this bit down here at the bottom? You can actually see that there's audio content. Let's render this EQ. Boom, it's gone. And as long as my voice isn't doesn't sound worse after I do that, then we're in the clear. So let's go ahead and check it out. Piper picked a pack of pickled peppers. So it sounds better. It doesn't sound like I've taken off too much. One thing that I dislike about RX-7's EQ is there's no spectral analyzer here. So I can't see where the frequency of my voice is stopping. So you might want to take a different EQ from you know, your DAW to see where your voice is actually rolling off to make sure you're not taking off too much. You know, Probably around 80 hertz might work as well. If you look down here again, 80 hertz is still working. So you want to be careful there and you might need to use a secondhand EQ to check that out. We could always load it up inside of the plugin over here. We have the plugins option. Instead of the Pro C, let's come into Fab Filter Pro Q2, and let's go ahead and run the dialog and see where my voice is rolling off. Door. Peter Piper picked a pack of pickled peppers. Things like these, that, this, those, three. Furthermore, you know, so right around 90 is where it's a good place for me to roll it off. So I could come in here and pull it up. You know, maybe a little bit less than 90, just in case there's a certain word that pushes it down a little bit further. But that's a good place. And that's a good setting for me. So I might actually even come in and save this preset inside of the EQ. So add preset. And I could just title it something like Joshua's voice, you know. And then that's there. But again, I come into my EQ, open it up and come in to Joshua's voice, and now we're good to go. So that's how I set up my studio chain. So if I come back in here to my initial state and go ahead and render this now, it's gonna go through each one of those modules one at a time in the order top to bottom and just make my audio sound better. And there we go. Now the next thing to do would be to listen to the entire piece to make sure there weren't any issues. Sally sells seashells down by the seashore. S's sound good. 
Peter Piper picked a pack of pickled peppers. P sound good? Things like these, that, this, those, three. Furthermore, I like facts and fiction and nonfiction as well as fantastic theories about things. Okay, so there's only one issue here and it's right here and it has to do with that breath module. And I'm gonna talk about this in its own video, so I'm gonna skip it here. But that's how to set up the module chain and why it's important and a little bit of extra information about how to use third-party plugins inside of RX7. Anyway, I'm Joshua Casper here for Plugin Boutique. Links, as always, are in the video description and I hope to see you in the next video. Yeah.